He is the former chairman of Namur, the process industry's automation technology interest group and has held leading positions at Ivoni. Dr. Willem Otten has accompanied and implemented numerous digitalization projects in over 30 years. Nowadays, he supports companies in their digital transformation with his consulting company. And in some projects, engineering base plays a major role. Yeah, actually, I'm, I wouldn't say I was supervising, I'm acting as a senior consultant for that quite challenging project, um, mainly s con, yeah, supporting in engineering and technology transfer. Uh, as you mentioned, the, the name of the original name of the project was Pilot Plant of the Future. Yeah. It's a quite a challenging project because we want to implement uh, current state technology mm -hmm. in order to provide a pilot facility which is highly flexible and which can uh, reduce the time to market, so introducing new technologies or products. And actually the technologies we are implementing uh, is digitalization, so full digitalization of the whole plant and uh, modularization. Yeah, as I said, the, our intention is to implement a complete digital twin uh, for the whole, whole facility. Whole facility means for the core process, yeah, and the utilities and this, uh, the CSA. Mm -hmm. Of course, uh, the, the process plant is, uh, is the core of it. And meanwhile, we have the common understanding in the process industry that the, uh, let's say, complete digital twin consists of, yeah, on the one hand, it's structural and an asset model, yeah, covering the process and the plant. And uh, on the other hand, the simulation model, so a behavior model, and third, the operational model. In our case, the operational model for the modular plant is the MTP, the model type package. Mm -hmm. um, if, the, if you look at that architecture I just described, the core is on the master data, uh, the structural and the asset information. So you need them as well for simulation as, as for the operation. Um, so the core is the, let's say, CAE tool which covers um, the 2D world. And as, we, as I said, we want to have an integrated system. So there are a number of requirements uh, <coughs> for the CAE tool. And that's what we at the end evaluated. Uh, on the first um, topic is that this tool should cover all the disciplines, mechanical, apparatus, machines, piping, but also aut uh, automation within an integrated tool. That was the <coughs> one requirement. The second one that uh, this tool and the data model implemented should follow international standards. That's mainly the ISO 5926 and um, DEXB. So we expect an DEXB export from that, from that tool. Mm -hmm. Um, third, we, this um, tool should have open standard, since it has to communicate with the simulation, mm -hmm. yeah, with the treaty tool, with other tools, mm -hmm. yeah, it has to have open standards. And finally, and not yeah, rather important was we are going to build a modular plant. So we combine digitalization and modularization. So the system should be able to have a modular view on your plant and manage modular let's say the modular data management the, and the data model. Yeah, that's the question a lot of people are asking <laughs> yeah, what it's in for us at the end. Uh, actually, we, we did an evaluation in uh, the so-called one CAE project within Nivonic. We invested quite uh, some money in, in developing in, in a comprehensive data model. Um, and to build up the business case, we evalu evaluated the advantages. On the one hand, it's, it's, it's the integration of engineering along the asset life cycle. So that means the tools should cover the process development, plant development, and detail engineering mm -hmm. as across the disciplines. Mm -hmm. So at the end, you reduce the interface effort mm -hmm. between these disciplines and along the asset lifecycle, and of course also the interfaces uh, <coughs> effort to, to cover the interface with the EPCM. So that's the one uh, big advantage. But what's more important, you have a consistent database. Mm -hmm. yeah, if you're working, currently we're working with 
drawings, with Excel sheets. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, if you look at the quality of our engineering, you very often realize the quality in construction. Yeah. <laughs> so, at the end, it's uh, the improvement of uh, of the quality of the engineering, mm -hmm. which um, it is. And we we had some pilot, uh, or one pilot, where we actually evaluated the advantage and we were able to in save 15% of the uh, investment cost yeah, by using an integrated en engineering. So it really pays, pays off. Okay. But at the end, if you look at the overall savings, there are even more savings in operation. If we are able okay. to use these tools in operation as well yeah. and keep our <laughs> our data model updated yeah. in, in one integrated uh, tool, it's 70% of the savings is at the end in, in operations. Okay. Uh, that means uh, small capital projects, brownfield projects, management of change. Yeah. So okay. it's not only about engineering at the end, it's, it's about operation and covering the whole life cycle. Yeah, because the, the major driver for the process industry is the sustainability at the moment, yeah? mainly the carbon footprint. And that's also the use case for the pilot plant of the future. It's now called carbon, carbon capture and utilization transitional test bed. Mm -hmm. So our main use case is uh, using CO2, uh, renewable hydrogen, and then produce methanol and uh, following products uh, from this renewal, renewable sources. Mm -hmm. So that's... But definitely the, the main driver is the transition of the process industry, the whole supply and value change mm -hmm. uh, to be based on renewable uh, products or raw products uh, at the end made from hydrogen, uh, ammonia or whatever, yeah, but based on renewable energy. So that's a ma major driver. Mm -hmm. That means there's a high pressure on innovation mm -hmm. in the industry and then come back to what are the, the main tools to cover this, yeah. Yeah, to cope with this uh, tr pr pressure on, on it, uh, development and um, yeah, uh, implementing sophisticated digitalization and modularization mm -hmm. at the end. Mm -hmm. So that's the reason why at the end sustainability, digitalization and, and modularization uh, comes <coughs> come together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, what we realized is in particularly in combining Digitalization, modularization, both technologies are not mature. Yeah? Um, and by combining this, you see the weakness of this. We have the, the MTP mm -hmm. standard, the modularization, which is not finalized. Mm -hmm. yeah? And also, if you look at the digital yeah, digitalization, the data models, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. we have still fragmented uh, pieces and <coughs> parts of that model. And we are, what we are currently doing, we try to integrate this really in one digital twin, at least have a, a standardized core of that. As I said, the, at the end, it's digitalization and modularization. Um, we have to, to develop a common digital twin, common language yeah, for our engineering. And on the other hand, uh, modularization. If you look at the modularization, yeah, what will happen is the same as car industry. I always compare it with the car industry. 30 years ago, you designed individual cars, mm -hmm. had individual pro, uh, production plants mm -hmm. to build it. Today, you configure it, your car, your mm -hmm. car is modular. So your, your product is modular and your uh, plant to produce is also modular. Mm -hmm. You can do any kind of car on the same, on the same production plant. Mm -hmm. And the same will happen in the, in, in the process industry uh, with the modularization. Mm -hmm. It's, we are still at the, at the beginning, mm -hmm. yeah, but I'm pretty sure this will drive the technology over the last 10 to 20 years.